The last trend we're going to study today is electronegativity. This is important because at the end of this unit, we talk in terms of polar and nonpolar covalent bonding. So this becomes very important because the trend determines whether or not a covalent bond is polar or nonpolar. So we really revisit this again later. So electronegativity is a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract electrons when chemically combined with another element. So that's very different than ionization energies or electron affinity. Okay? It has everything to do with when they are combined with another element. Okay? Before, we've been just talking about standalone atoms and their behavior in these trends. Okay? In terms of bonding, electronegativity shows you which atoms will attract the electrons to itself. We measured on the Pauling scale. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, and cesium and francium are the least electronegative elements. So if we look at a small section of the periodic table and we look at the electronegativity values, we see that hydrogen has a 2.1 value. These are unitless, whereas fluorine is 4.0. We can look at potassium 0.9 and bromine 2.8. So we can see going across the period, the electronegativity values increase. Again, it's because of the shielding effects and that nuclear charge effects as you increase across the period. The atomic radius decreases, um, the nuclear charge increases, uh, ionization energies increase, electron affinities increase. All of those tell us that electronegativities will also increase across the period. However, going down the group, we can see that they do in decrease going down the group because they are getting larger in their atomic radius, therefore their ionization energies are decreasing, electro electron affinities are also decreasing, and their, their size increases moving these electrons further away from the nucleus, making it less likely that they would want to share electrons with other elements unequally. So it increases across a period and decreases down the groups. Again, if we look at a um, interactive graphing of these uh, particular properties for electronegativities, we can see that as you go from lithium across a period to fluorine, we see that they increase. So across periods, they increase. See, across a period, it increases. Across a period, it increases. Got a few anomalies here, which, but the general trends, they increase. Again, the increasing and then increasing. And then as you go down the group, so if we looked at the noble gases going down the group, we see that they decrease. You can also look at it with a cross line, or we can look at it with the ball. Gives you a better visual that way. Oops, you saw the answers. <laughs> okay, so you'll want to have your tabs up and you'll want to have a periodic table out and you'll want to try, try to organize these from least to greatest in terms of their electronegativity. So we're looking at selenium, germanium, bromine, and arsenic, and we see that those elements are all in the same period. So hit pause and think about what how you would order these. So if you said germanium has the uh, uh, ger germanium has the smaller ele electronegativity, you are correct, and bromine has a higher electronegativity. Therefore, when germanium forms bonds, it will be tend to be nonpolar, and then when bromine forms bonds, it will be polar. Example two. So we have beryllium, magnesium, calcium, and barium. If we put them in order from least to greatest, hit pause. You find that barium has a less electronegative value than beryllium. And again, beryllium tends to want to form both covalent and ionic compounds. And the, the rest of these tend to form, uh, always form ionic compounds. So in summary, 
you had these at the beginning that I showed you where you can uh, access them. So you can always refer to these anytime you're having to answer any questions. You really only have to know two of them. And then the rest are just the opposite. So if you just say ionization and electronegativity increase across a period, decrease that down the group, the others are just the opposite. So again, the only two you really have to know their trends for is ionization energy, electronegativity, increase across a period, decrease down the group, and the others are just the opposite. So that's pretty easy to remember. You just have to remember these two and what the trend is, and then the rest are the opposite. Here's another way to look at it. What causes the trends? It's important to know that the shielding effect is constant because we're putting electrons into the same valence shell. Therefore, we're not adding any new electrons anywhere else. Therefore, we're adding protons as you go across. Therefore, the attraction between the protons and electrons increases. Therefore, it shrinks the atom. It increases electronegativity, decreases ionization energy, and increasing electro uh, 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 electronegativity. Whereas going down the group, both are increasing. However, therefore, the atomic radius increases, ionization energies decrease, um, electron affinity decreases, and electronegativity decreases. Another handy one to look at in terms of cations and anions, they have these here along with the nuclear charge and shielding effect, which is handy to look at in terms of why they occur. It's because of these values here. And the last one that you can look at, and there are many, many others, you can find them all over the internet. Um, this one does give the atomic and ionic radii and then the electron affinity and ionization and electronegativity. Again, metallic character decreases and increases down the group. 